In this session, we are going to discuss the famous nut and bolt problem. Uh, in engineering applications, we are uh, always concerned about the nut and bolt issues are there. That what are the stresses developed when a nut is tightened. When nut is tightened, suppose there is a nut and bolt and there is a tube and we have tightened the nut. So after tightening the nut, there will be some stresses developed in the tube as well as stresses developed in the bolt. So what are the stresses? How to solve that problem? So that we are going to discuss in this session. So let us draw the diagram what we are going to discuss. Uh, a nut and bolt diagram let us make. Uh, suppose this is our bolt. and it is surrounded by a tube a tube is given to us it is surrounded by a tube which has some internal dia and external dia like this bolt may be of generally it is in of steel and uh, the tube is generally of copper but it may be any material right and uh, there are washers very little washers are there very small thickness washers are there like this so some washers are there on both side we have washers and then there is a nut for tightening uh, the washers so that the tube can be tightened so there are nuts on both sides like this here is a nut suppose this is one nut another nut is always on this side like this right and the bolt has thread a bolt has thread this is our bolt centrally it is a bolt and this is our tube this is tube the, uh, we are given with dia of the bo uh, this bolt some dia of the bolt is given suppose d the inner dia of the tube must be given there may be given inner dia of the tube suppose di di is the inner dia of the tube and do is the outer dia of the tube right suppose this is the outer dia of the tube do so do is the outer dia of the tube di is the inner dia of the tube and d is the dia of the bolt this is given to us right and there is a nut and bolt assembly and there are threads there are threads in this bolt like this so these are the threads now and this is our uh, bolt and this is tube our aim is to find out the stresses stresses in tube and bolt when the nut is tightened right so what is the aim aim is to find out stress in tube suppose this is one and bolt suppose this is tube so stress in tube and stress in bolt when nut are tightened when nut are tightened what will be the stress where sigma 1 is stress in tube stress in tube and sigma 2 is stress in bolt so our aim is to find out the stresses right when nut are tightened so uh, here you can see here there is difference between two two threads 
this difference between two threads. This is called pitch of the uh, bolt. Pitch. P. P. Pitch is the pitch of the bolt. So P is given by pitch. It may be mm, it may be in meter or centimeter, but generally it is used in mm because the distance is very small. So pitch of the bolt is given by uh, mm, given in mm, pitch of the threads, right? And when the nut tightens, it, it, it revolves a revolution. When it revolves a one revolution, it, it uh, moves a distance of equal to one pitch, right? So in one revolution, the actual advancement of the nut is one pitch, p, right? So in one revolution actual advancement actual advancement of nut is equal to p pitch of the threads right it means that uh, the nut moves from one thread to second thread right one thread, thread to the another thread and the vicinity right by the one revolution of the uh, nut right so when one revolution of the nut is there in one revolution actual advancement of the nut is equal to pitch right so in n revolutions in n revolutions the actual advancement of the nut will be so by linear interpolation we can find out there will be np right so np is basically the actual advancement of the nut so np is actual advancement of nut in n revolutions when that nut revolves n revolutions then the actual advancement of the nut will be np now when the nut uh, nut uh, tightens nut tightens the tube will compress tube will be compressed nut is tightened and the tube will compress and there will be compressive stress there will be compressive stress developed in the tube right so this will be sigma 1 the compressive stress developed in the tube so it is obvious that whenever we stress when we whenever we uh, tighten the bolt uh, the stresses developed in the tube will be compressive compressive stress will be developed in the tube so uh, after nut tightening nut tightening the stress developed in tube is compressive so that will be compressive right and suppose some force is developed due to this stress the force produced in this is p right given by p so p is the p1 is the force in tube and that is compressive and that is compressive and that is given by sigma 1 a1 a1 is the area of the tube now we have not applied any force from outside we have just rotated the tightened the nut we have not applied any external force here right any direct force any type of another force here we are just tightening the uh, nut tube and uh, nut and due to that there is compressive force developed in the tube because we are there is no external force applied where this force will go what will go what will what will be happen that this force will tend to tense the bolt there will be tensile forces developed in the bolt due to compressive forces developed in the tube because there is two so that these two forces can be cancelled out so that these forces should be equal and opposite right so because there is no external force so what will happen in the bolt there will be compressive force developed in the bolt and due to which there is compressive stress developed in the bolt so bolt will become in tension and tube will become in compression and as there is no external force so the force developed in bolt will be equal to force developed in tube so p2 will be equal to force in bolt and because and there is no external to, uh, force so this this should be tensile and equal to sigma 2 a2 and also because because there is no external force as as there is no 
external force apply so p1 a1 should be equal to p2 a2 or you can write uh, sorry p1 should be equal to p2 p1 should be equal to p2 these two forces should be equal and because force is stress into area the sigma 1 a1 must be equal to sigma 2 a2 so this is the first equation first equation for the analysis of the stress for finding the stress so our aim is to find out sigma 1 and sigma 2 two unknowns are there for two unknowns two equations are required one equation is this that force developed in tube due to nut tightening will be equal to force developed in bolt and both should be equal because there is no external force applied and this should, should cancel out in each other because one is compressive one is tensile and no external force is there they should equal right and opposite in nature so sigma 1 a1 should be equal to sigma 2 a2 in magnitude so this is one of the equation to solve the nut and bolt problem now next next second equation where from the second equation come now there is some uh, extension in the bolt there is some compression in the tube and is nut is have some actual uh, advancement that is equal to NP so the uh, the extension in the bolt plus the compression in the tube should be equal to axial advancement of the nut because otherwise what distance it will cover it will discover the distance which, at which the tube is compressed and at which the bolt is extended right so uh, the nut will move two types of distance the nut will move two types of distance one is the compression of the tube and another is the extension of the bolt so you can say here that Axial advancement, axial advancement of the nut, of nut, should be equal to compression of tube, compression in tube, plus extension in bolt, extension in bolt. So, axial advancement of the nut should be equal to compression in tube plus expansion in bolt. It means that delta L1, delta L1 which is the compression in tube plus delta L2 which is the extension in bolt that should be equal to the axial advancement of the nut which is equal to NP n times p and what force or what stress is causing delta l1 that is sigma 1 a1 so we can write p1 l1 upon a1 e1 plus p2 l2 upon a2 e2 should be equal to np or we can write or we can write sigma 1 l1 upon e1 plus sigma 2 L2 upon E2 must be equal to NP. So this is our another equation. This is another equation for sigma 1 and sigma 2. This is second equation. By solving 1 and 2, we can find out the stresses in nut, uh, tube and bolt sigma 1 and sigma 2. So by solving, by solving 1 and 2 sigma 1 and sigma 2 can be found out this is how we obtain the stresses in tube and bolt in a nut and bolt problem so this is very famous nut and bolt problem so i will ex explain it again that there is some tightening of the nut tightening of the nut due to which the compressive stress is developed in the tube due to which compressive stress is developed in the tube and the compressive forces are developed in the tube right as there is no external force applied so this force and internal force developed in the bolt should be equal so due to this compressive force developed in the tube there will be uh, tensile force tensile load will be developed in the bolt and uh, tensile stresses will be developed in the load bolt 
So, as there is no external force, this compressive force and this tensile force should be equal. So, as these two forces are equal, so we are saying that P1 is the force in the tube which is compressive and P2 which is the force in the bolt is tensile. This is sigma 1 A1 and this is sigma 2 A2 and these should be equal. These should be equal because there is no external force. Right? So, this is one of the equation for solving the stress in nut, uh, bolt and tube. Next, we have tightened the nut and there is pitch, pitch is the uh, uh, distance between one thread and another thread, right? that is the pitch. Uh, now, in one rotation, in one rotation, the uh, actual advancement of the nut is given by P. So, in n revolution, by linear interpolation, we can write that uh, the actual advancement of the nut will be NP, N times P, because there is N revolution, so NP. So, NP is the actual advancement of the nut. Now, the actual advancement of the nut will be equal to, there are two things happening here, right? One is compression of the tube and another is the extension of the bolt. So, nut will move both the distances, nut will move both the distances. It will dis move the distance which is by which the bolt is extending and it will also move the distance by, by which the tube is compressing. So, so actual advancement of the nut will be given by compression in tube plus extension in the bolt. So, change in length of the tube plus change in length of the bolt should be equal to the actual advancement of the nut which is given by NP. So, we know that uh, actual, uh, actual uh, deformation of the uh, bar or anything is given by PL upon AE. So, this formula we have used and P by A is stress, so sigma L upon E plus sigma L upon E of the tube of the bolt that should be equal to actual advancement in NP. And solving 1 and 2, these are two equations, we can find out the stress in tube and bolt.